Nearly 1,000 Americans died yesterday from coronavirus. We saw another 42,000 new cases. Wisconsin set new records for daily deaths and hospitalizations, and the state is seeing a huge surge in new cases. It is now ranked as the third highest state in the U.S. for new cases. So why is President Trump planning to hold two campaign rallies there? Joining us now is CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta. It's almost like he couldn't choose any other place that would be more dangerous for a rally right now, Sanjay. I mean, this is what his own White House Coronavirus Task Force calls a red zone because it has the highest level of community spread. A super red zone because this is this actually really exceeds the criteria even to qualify for a red zone. You know, it, it, it's it's interesting. You you have Wisconsin. You're seeing evidence of exponential growth over there. We're seeing evidence now that opening colleges in in some of these cities in Wisconsin is definitely it seems to be uh, linked to community spread. I mean, everyone's sort of back and forth in this. How much of an impact is it going to have? People wait a few days or or a couple of weeks and say it doesn't look like it's much impact. The reality is you've got to really widen out how you think about time with this pandemic. Uh, you could start to see impacts several weeks later, and I think people need to pay attention to what's happening in Wisconsin. I think the real question is, if you're in that area right now, you're out and about, what's the likelihood that someone you come in contact with has the coronavirus? The, the likelihood is much, much higher in Wisconsin versus other places in the country, and it's also much higher that they won't know it because they're not doing enough testing. So it's, it's, uh, it's the kind of place where if this were a storm, you'd tell people to shelter in place, not go aggregate in large numbers. You know, I, I've always wondered if we could have seen, if we could see this virus, if, could, if it was actually visible, you saw it was tethered by these six foot strings coming out of your nose and your mouth, people would keep their distance. People would see a lot of people are carrying the virus, time to stay indoors for a while. Unfortunately, we can't see it. So you have to rely on the data to say that that's a bad idea to have a rally right now in Wisconsin. Look, and the test just so crystal clear. We saw that hospitalization chart, which is just the data that can't be interpreted any other way than this is getting significantly worse. There are a lot of sick people who need care. You can see the steep increase in Wisconsin right now. And by the way, if you look at the national chart for hospitalizations, it has now bent upward again. We are trending in the wrong direction there. Mm -hmm. One other piece of news, there's actually a lot of news on, on, on the pandemic today. There's some vaccine news from Moderna where that company is now saying, that they expect their vaccine, if it's approved, to be available for wide distribution sometime in the middle or late next year. There was also news, Sanjay, though, which seemed to move back the earliest point when they think the vaccine will be ready for emergency use approval. They say not until, I believe, November 25th at the earliest, which is obviously after the election and later than I think we had been at least told by the president. Yeah, th th so this is very interesting. And again, we've been following this very, very closely. There's, there's a couple things at play here. One is that the FDA has signaled, and this you know, ended up being a pretty contentious issue again, but the FDA signaled that they wanted to wait around two months after people received their shots to basically see if there was any side effects that were emerging. When you, when you looked at the calendar, two months did put you, as you say, John, at the end of November, early December. So that sort of tracks with that. And we know that Dr. Hahn, the FDA commissioner said yesterday, we're sticking with those guidelines despite any political pressure. So I think that's what we're talking about. But you know what's interesting, and, and we've been doing a lot of reporting on this, is that nobody really knows when the authorization may happen. No one even knows if an authorization will happen. There's only this one small independent entity that's even getting a chance to look at the data. Everyone else is guessing. Now we had a chance, they don't, this, this entity called the DSMB, they don't talk very much because they don't wanna be pressured. We were able to, to talk to one of these board members who uh, agreed to speak to us and describe what was happening here. Take a listen. By the way, to the scientists that are in charge, by the way, they will have the vaccine very soon. Listen. Despite promises like these, the vaccine timeline may not be up to the president alone or even the FDA for that matter because there is a small secretive group that sees the vaccine data before anyone else. If this all gets decided by a group called a Data and Safety Monitoring Board. The DSMB, as it is known, is a group of experts in all sorts of areas, like statistics, ethics, vaccine development. They are the only ones to get a few, quote, unblinded looks at the data as it starts to come in. They know who got the vaccine, who got the placebo. They're the ones who figure out whether it's time to say this is working. That's not a political decision. 
They are the ones that can advise the companies to apply for FDA review, or they might bring a trial to a halt. And right now, they have one of the most monumental tasks in the world. We want to know they're fully independent, that they have no prior uh, you know, relationships with the company, so they're not, they're not conflicted in any way. The members of the board do go through a fairly exhaustive vetting process, but these are perhaps the biggest questions. Can the DSMB be trusted? Do they have financial or political conflicts? Can they be pressured? What they don't want is um, their members of their committee being besieged by outside people trying to find out what's going on in the trials. Typically, their names remain confidential while the study is ongoing. But Susan Ellenberg, who serves on COVID-19 DSMBs, agreed to talk to us. How would you characterize the power of, of this board? I don't think you feel powerful. You feel responsible. You know that everybody's trusting you with these data. When you're looking at data, I think there's always a perception, certainly among lay people, that it's totally objective. Is it really that objective? Of course, there's some degree of subjectivity. It's a judgment call. And, and that's the way these committees work. I don't see any reason why it should be delayed further. The FDA basically said that it's very reasonable to wait and observe for two months before authorizing anything. The president has said, you know, they may not approve those guidelines. So what happens then? What's the role of the DSMB in a situation like this? We've certainly never been in a situation where the national leadership has seemed to be so involved, directly involved, in these kinds of processes. What will happen, I, I, don't, I don't know. It was a DSMB that made the call to pause the AstraZeneca trial when a previously healthy 37-year-old woman developed a neurological condition in the UK, and it was a critical decision. Even an adverse event that happens as infrequently as one in uh, 10,000 people or one in 20,000 people, that would be a lot of people who would have a serious adverse event. The country's top doctors assure they won't be cutting any corners on safety. But for now, it's in the hands of Ellenberg and other members of the DSMBs to make sure that's the case. I think we're in uncharted territory here. This is, who, who knows what, what, the, what the administration is going to do. So a totally uh, unprecedented situation to put it lightly, but again, keep in mind, that this board, the DSMB, they're the only ones who unblind some of this data. The people who are getting the vaccine or placebo, they don't know which they got. The companies which are administering these through their researchers, they don't know either. So there's a lot of pressure on the DSMB and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a, a look at how that process is gonna unfold. Bobby, this is really helpful about the way things should work. Emphasis on should, let's hope, appreciate it. So a laptop and USB drives 